half in the bag. Who wants to watch these frauds talk about movies? Hey, I went out and I got some food. Would you like any? No, I'm not hungry. No? Me neither. Uh. Uh. What time is it? What day is it? It's Tuesday. Holy shit. You know, it's been like five days since Plinkett left saying he was gonna go figure some things out. Mm. Should we alert the authorities? Alert the authorities? Why? Squatting here has been the best few days of my whole life. This place is a palace compared to my apartment. Yeah. Mm. You know, we've gotten away with a lot here over the last year. Yeah. In fact, just yesterday, I used Plinkett's sewer to make bathtub gin. I drilled a glory hole in Plinkett's bathroom. I turned Plinkett's lawnmower into a ride for neighborhood children. There were some unfortunate accidents. I watched Meatballs Part 2 six times in a row yesterday. Oh yeah, I, I forgot to mention, I sold Plinkett's backyard to the local graveyard. I don't know if you've noticed or not. I think I tripped over a couple mounds back there. I thought it was gophers. No, it was dead children. You know, with all these activities going on, I haven't even any time to see movies lately. Yeah, that's right. Well, there's that many movies that are out that are good. Hey. What? Look what I found. What's that? Oh, it's that. Oh. Hey, you found my missing cheeseburger. Oh, I'm smoking it. I forgot that I'm smoking it. Mm. I thought you said you weren't hungry. Oh, you're right. I'm not. <sighs> and now, coming to this theater, one of the most incredible stories of modern time. Zat. Invasion of the Walking Catfish. A crazed scientist, Dr. Leopold, is convinced he can turn humans into fish. He proves it by transforming himself into a horrible, revengeful, killer fish. So this is Zat, and Zat is one of our favorite bad, funny bad movies. Yes. Um, we found Zat at the Chicago Comic Con. It may come as a surprise to some of you, but there's bootleggers at these Comic Cons. Yeah. And as you can see, the cover was intriguing. Yes. Um, especially the artwork on the back. Originally, the DVD was just a burned DVD-R. Yeah. We, we added the title on here. Oh, that wasn't even on there initially? No, I, I wrote that on there. It was released on Laserdisc, which is what this is a transfer of. Right. Uh, because it has the, the special features afterwards where it's all just one thing that keeps playing. And uh, yeah, so we watched it, and and uh, it became an instant favorite. Oh my God, no! no one is safe. Zat. Well, what, what's the story behind Zat, Jay? Well, Zat is a movie that was made in 1971 by a company called Barton Films, which was primarily a company that did a lot of commercials and uh, like industrial films. And, and it shows. And it shows. And they still do to this day, apparently. But Zad is the only feature they ever made. Uh, it's a company in Jacksonville, Florida. And it definitely has that feel of, uh, of a movie like, uh, like a Don Dohler movie, like we talked about Galaxy Invader. This feels like a small band of local people got together and put on a show. It also feels like uh, a company that makes industrial films decided to make a, uh, a creature feature movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the movie opens with uh, a lot of stock footage of animals, uh, underwater sea creatures. 
What's an inspiration? But this movie is about a mad scientist of sorts uh, that stumbles around moping for like the first 20 minutes of the movie. I wanted to, I wanted to shut it off within the first 10 minutes. It's Zad is very methodical. Mm -hmm. The movie is very methodical and and dull, and, and and that adds to the charm later on. Yes, because it becomes like this action movie kind of, where it's like dun 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 dun, the creatures coming and and all this stuff, but it's shot like like a educational film or something. Secure the electrodes to the denticulated portions of the pictorial spine. The, 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 the clash of the style and the substance starts to work towards its uh, advantage later on. Yeah. But the first 20 minutes or so, it's, it's really dull and really dry, so you have to get past that yeah. until we see the Zat. The scientist was trying to do an experiment where he creates a race of people that can live underwater. That's the backstory. I think. I think. And uh, no one liked this idea. Everyone rejected poor Zat's idea. And so he went crazy and did all the experiments on himself and turned into a giant catfish monster. So in order to do that, he, he squirts this red liquid into a tank and then takes off his clothes and he, and he was wearing two pairs of underwear. <laughs> Um, for some reason, maybe to maybe to shield his genitals from the liquid. It's possible. But then he gets onto one of those those gurneys that helicopter rescue people have. For some reason, he has to lay down in that. Yeah. And then pull himself into the water by himself. He doesn't have an assistant. Yeah, well, that, that's a lonely, a lonely soul. He's a lonely that's, guy. That's yeah. what he's the movie's a very about. Sad guy. He's, yeah. very, he's very emo. He's got the hair. He's got the he's, emo he, hair. It's very sad. Um, but he lowers himself into the water, and of course, turns into Zat after that. Uh, and it's the greatest costume, the greatest monster in cinematic history. And now, another big challenge for you. Uh, it's our suspicion that, that the Greedo costume in Star Wars was modeled after I think Zat George costume. Lucas is familiar with Zed. Nothing at all like the catfish, but it's beautiful. The, there's a plan by this scientist who, who may or may not be a, a former Nazi. There's one mention in the movie of him being a Nazi, yeah. just offhand, and it's out of nowhere. Yeah, but, but he has a quasi-plan. Yeah, uh, his plan initially is to walk around a lot. And, and then his plan is to climb into the local lake and spray a squirt bottle around in the water that contains the red liquid, apparently, even though none of this is explained. You kind of have to figure out what's going on, on you know, just on the images alone. It's like a know. David Lynch film. It's like a David Lynch film. But, but Zat does have a, a wheel, uh, a chronological wheel, like a Mayan calendar wheel yes. on the wall that yes. he made with markers and crayons. Is that his plan to turn the entire state of Florida well, into... Well, after he sprays the squirt bottle into a small lake, he goes home and he crosses out Florida. Well, every time he goes back to his, his uh, lab, it's like the same four shots yeah. every single time. So it starts with him walking through the basement, and then there's a shot of him walking up the stairs, and then him walking into the lab. It's the same and shot. It's the same three shots over and over every time they're establishing this. There's also an additional part of, of Zat's plan, which is to kill the two guys that didn't believe in his plan. Yeah. But then Zat goes into one of their homes while he's preparing his fishing reel, um, and, and Zat uh, grabs his head, and he dies from that. Oh. 
and also he wants to find love, I guess? That's that's the third element. The third element. Zat wants to find a lady a lady Zat. Well, is it is it that, that it, it, what it, <laughs> It wasn't part of his original plan. He added it to the plan because he draws the picture of the girl. This is this is what happened. So Zad is back in the lake mm -hmm. and he's squirting the squirt bottle around mm -hmm. and it runs out of the red liquid. But when he runs out of the liquid, he, he peeks above the water and he sees a sexy lady hanging her clothes up on yeah. a clothesline. Or she no, she's painting. Lives She's painting a picture of her car. I think she lives out of her car. But Zat, Zat falls in love. And yeah, he says, just like that. He says, well shit, now I'm a catfish man. I ain't gonna nab this broad as a catfish man. Yeah. So he he kidnaps her uh, to turn her into his Zat lady, but it doesn't go according to plan. No, no. <laughs> But he takes her body and he dissolves it in liquids and turns her into bones. Yeah. And this is our protagonist. Yeah, I, I think. I, I really, I think our protagonist is the, well, it's the local sheriff and his black son. Yeah, well, I ain't seen that college education of yours do much good so far. Walking fish wasn't part of the curriculum. It's, it's really odd because the sheriff I don't know, I guess people see Zat, right? Yes, people are calling because they're seeing Zat and he's the typical movie sheriff where yeah. he doesn't believe the, what anyone's telling him. That's too far-fetched, that right. kind of stuff. But then but then later on in the end of the film, he reveals that there is indeed a mad scientist that lives in the town who wants to turn himself into a walking catfish. Yeah, he suddenly makes that connection that maybe this is what people are talking about. What's the matter, Lou? A human fish. Sounds like something old Doc Leopold might try. Is that for real, Lou? Yeah, there was a rumor going around that he uh, was trying to... Uh, to what? Turn a man into a fish. Damn, Lou, why didn't you tell us sooner? Well, I, I never thought of it until just this mm -hmm. second. Uh... Oh, you got to talk about your favorite scene in the movie. Oh, my God. Zat shows up on the, the shore, and I, I think he gets stabbed or shot. He gets injured. Yeah. And so Zat needs to go to the pharmacy. It's one of the best uh, scenes in, I would say, in motion picture history. It's, it's 30 seconds of pure cinematic bliss. Yeah. So we have to talk about the hippie scene. Oh. This is the this is a very very 70s scene. Yes. It yes. comes out of nowhere. Oh my life. Well, people told me I should follow. So I followed him and then I followed you. The entire town is fled because of the zap monster except for a small little house of hippies. Mhm. Mm that for some reason have stuck around and decided to play music all night. Yeah. And then the sheriff shows up. Yeah, it's one of those scenes where it, it's not funny bad. Uh, it's sort of baffling. Like, what what's happening? Why is this here? Yeah. Like, like, 
you, you start to like look beyond the film and think about like them making it and stuff is because it's like are they like on acid for real yeah they just decided to film this and then and then you and then it's like the sheriff comes in and he's like he's nodding along and the beats wrong that he's nodding to and then the next scene they cut to is the him like leading them down the street and there's a guy playing the flute yeah, the Pied and it, Piper scene. And then, yeah, you start to think, oh, it's the Pied Piper, you know, you know, ushering the rats out of the city. Are they doing a thing like that? Yeah. And then he really, he leads them into the jail, locks them in the jail so that they'll be safe. From Zat. Is he trying to say something? The point is we never see these hippies again. We never see them again. We never <laughs> saw them before this. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's like, are they trying to say something about society, man? I think that one of the, the people that was involved with the film knew somebody that could play guitar, so they wanted to put a scene in the movie where a guy plays the guitar. That's the most logical <laughs> explanation, yeah. Oh my life. I'm fine, shut up! I don't know what you're talking about. At this point, the movie is off the rails. Yes. It's skidded off the road into, the, into a ditch. And there's no point to anything. Mm. Zat's plan, it doesn't matter. But Zat does focus on one thing, and it's finding a second lady to, yes. to apparently have catfish sex with later, yeah. even though the first time it failed. So yeah, I guess he hasn't really done any sort of tests to try and make it different the second time. He just decides he's going to try it again, I See, guess. If, if I was Zat, I would, I would scoop up the old lady on the bicycle, you know, the, the porker down the street, the fat lady, and I would test it on them first. Sure, sure. And say, oh, you know, I gotta, I gotta up the Zat liquid a little, you know, to make the ladies turn into Zat. Yeah. And then take the hot chicks and put them in the pool. So then the rest of the movie is, is long stretches of the local cops trying to get Zat, right? He, he kidnaps I the- I think so. He kidnaps the lady. <laughs> So they're on the hunt for Zat. Yes. Um, this uh, is the epic uh, climax of the movie. Uh, yeah, which takes 45 minutes. It's half there. the movie, yeah. yeah. So so the guy is riding around on the on the Jeep. He's hanging outside the Jeep. The sheriff and his black son are driving the Jeep. For whatever reason, he can't sit comfortably in the, maybe it's because there's a black man in the car. Damn shit, yellow belly, the damn nigger lover to boot. He finds a little dune buggy thing. It's a little watercraft. Yeah, it's one of those things that can go on land or in the water. Uh, it's not his. It comes out of nowhere. Yeah. He just gets in it and starts riding it. Yeah, it, 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 it drives it into the water and then it starts going one mile an hour. Yeah. The buggy thing is one of those things, again, like the hippie scene where they probably knew someone that could play guitar. and They knew somebody that owned one of those. The director's brother had one of those. So they were like, we gotta put this in the movie. Check that out, will you, huh? And so they show up at, at Zat's house. The African Floridian goes inside. He finds nothing inside, but the sheriff remains outside and then gets into an awkward fight scene with Zat. <laughs> the inside, they find the girl. Uh, and that's that's really one of the best fight scenes. Of the movie. You know, the things happen in Zat. Zat shows up. He walks around a lot. Zat hits somebody, and then the movie ends. And and you're like, who? Was I supposed to care about what was happening? What was the ultimate goal? The goal is uh, Zat. The goal is the costume. Yeah. That's the reason the movie was made, was for the costume. Uh, yeah. The costume is, is amazing. Uh, it has no articulation whatsoever in the face. Yeah. And I, I would gather that the actor wearing it couldn't see in the costume because there's lots of takes that they kept in the movie of him tripping on everything.
Not only is he constantly tripping on things and they keep it in the movie, they hold on shots of him for extended periods of time. Just long stretches of Zat walking. Well, it's sort of like they say, like, Zat, the scene is Zat goes through town. You know, Zat walks through town. And instead of setting it up in all these, like, clever camera angles and editing it quickly, like, you know, Zat's shadow goes by and he walks. There's, like, a literal interpretation of the script. <laughs> Zat walks into town. Yeah. And then there's a light on the car that's moving along with the camera and, like, just filming them. <laughs> And it's, yeah, it's a literal interpretation of yeah. the script. And, yeah. and, and that's, that's a lot of the charm in the movie. It's like the complete and total lack of like the film language. Well, you can tell it was done by a company that does industrial films. Because it's yes. like, we need uh, wide shots of our facilities. Yeah. So you film it, you pan across their, their warehouse or whatever. Just replace that with a catfish monster. So it was kind of amazing because Zat was recently released on Blu-ray. It's it's odd timing that we just discovered it, and then shortly after, it was released on the Blu-ray. So yeah, this is the bootleg copy we had. Um, the new release, similar cover, looks like this. Uh, not as exciting of a background as the bootleg, though. The, the unfortunate thing about the new release is that it has the proper aspect ratio. Mm. The, the laser disc transfer that we watched originally was uh, apparently the movie was shot open mat, mm -hmm. where it, it's shot where there's certain areas of the film that are exposed that aren't meant to be seen in the final projected version. Uh, similar to Pee Wee's Big Adventure, there's a part in that where he's pulling the chain out of the bike, and on the VHS release, you could see yeah. the chain underneath coming through the bike. Right, yeah, or, or you would see boom mics. Or you see boom mics, yeah. yeah. I, I remember I watched the film in the theater. I watched um, The Patriot with Mel Gibson. Oh. And they didn't have the mat on mm. the whole time. The, <laughs> the projectionist forgot to put it on. Oh, wow. And the whole movie had a boom mic constantly in the frame. But there, <laughs> but there are parts of that that are really charming in the, the Laserdisc transfer version. Uh, like the fact that apparently the guy in the Zat costume just wanted to be comfy most of the time. Yeah. So he was wearing tennis shoes, and there's there's a couple parts in the movie where you see him in the Zat costume in tennis shoes. I think with Zat, it's not up there in the top movies of So Bad It's Funny. It's, it's up there in the top movies of you're constantly shouting questions at the screen. Yes, Like, yes. what the fuck is happening? What is this person doing? <laughs> I think we yelled more questions at the movie, you know, per any other movie that I've ever probably, seen. Probably, yeah. The only one that may have more questions shouted at would probably be Things. Yes. And Things is a movie that we may have to bring up at some points in the future. Yeah. I I'd rather not talk about Things. That's why we should. Oh, oh! Is that Plinkett's phone? It's ringing. Is his phone ringing? I will go answer it. Okay. Hello. Thank you. That was Mr. Plinkett. He says he's on his way here. He's gonna be here in five minutes. What? Uh, uh, quickly, um, barricade the door so we can stall him while we clean this place up. Good idea. Let's go. Shit, I just thought of something. What's that? I think we may have made things worse. Oh, I know. I realized that before we even started. Uh, should we just sneak out the back door? Shit, yeah, let's get out of here. All right. <laughs> 